All right. So good afternoon, everybody. Hope all is well. Sorry for running late. Got caught up in some traffic. I got in here. All right. Let's see anybody else coming through. All right. So today uh, we're going to do 12 1, 12 2. And um, also talk about uh, how we'll handle the rest of the service. So 12.1 is sampling frequency distributions and graphs. So the graphs piece, um, you know, check out, check them out. You got line graphs, high graphs, stuff like that. You know, check them out, read them, see if you have any questions on them. Not the greatest draw in the world. So it'll probably be more beneficial for you guys to look at the graphs, see if you have any issues with reading them, and then go from there. Um, but, you know, there's general graphs that you guys I'm pretty sure have seen before. But there are a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is, what I say? first one is constructing a group frequency distribution for the data. So the problem I pulled from MathLab, they actually gave you the first uh, class. And so notice it says use 41 through 45 for the first class, and then use the same width for each subsequent, subsequent class. And so um, I'll show you what that means in a second, but anybody holding on to that title? Scroll up on the title. All right, so. So this is the data set that we're gonna to use to create this frequency distribution. Give you guys a chance to write that down. All right. All right. So creating this frequency distribution. Notice once again, they gave us that 41 to 45, and then it wants to keep the same class width. So we got 41 to 45. So we have five numbers. So the next should be five numbers as well. So 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. And you just keep going with that same class width of five numbers, five numbers, five numbers, all the way to the point where you've covered every data value that's in this data set. And so what I mean by that, notice that I have five right here. In other words, there are five numbers that fits this, this uh, class description. In other words, 41 through 45. So if I were to go here, I got 43, 44, 44, 42 and 45. So five numbers within my data set is uh, 41 through 45. And if I go through the data set, it should be seven that are 46 through 50. Four of them are going to be 51 through 55, three, 56 through 60, three more to 61 through 65, and then two to 66 through 70. What part? So look at the first one and make sure we're good with that 41 through 45. So if you're up here, see notice I have five numbers that fit that description of 41 through 45. 
You got 43, 44, 44, 42, 45. No, no. So we got the numbers 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So when I go through my data set, 43 is one of these numbers. 44, because like the numbers 41 through 45. So how many numbers in this data set are, um, are 41 through 45? It's five of them. One, two, three, four, five, no? All right, all right, let's go to the bottom. Okay, so there are two numbers in the data set that's 66 through 70. So let me erase this. So if you're talking about 66 through 70, I got 67, you know, 67 is in this. And then 69 is in here. Those are only two numbers that are 66 through 70. And so that's the same, so that's the same thing with all of these. Like there's there are five numbers in this data set that's 41 through 45. Then there's seven numbers that's 46 through 50. So if I were to go here, there should be seven numbers I can find that's going to be 46 through 50. Okay, I get it. Good enough? Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Wait, so. Mm -hmm. I see that. Okay. 24 total data values. Mm hmm. Yep. And so she brought up what I uh, was about to mention. Notice there are 24 data values. So all of these numbers should add up to 24 because you have 24 data values. So, um, Make sure we're good with that. Make sure everybody's straight. So once again, there are five numbers that are 41 through 40, uh, 41 through 45. Seven numbers are 46 through 50. Four numbers are 51 through 55. Three numbers are 56 through 60. Three more numbers are 61 through 65. And then two numbers are 66 through 70. Anybody holding on to that before I scroll up? All right. The next type of plot, uh, next type of data distribution is a stem leaf plot. So your leaf is gonna be the rightmost digit of your data value. And then your stem will be all the values that precede that rightmost digit. So if we look at our two examples here, 53, um, the leaf is gonna be three, the rightmost digit, and then your stem is the five, the number, all the numbers that come before the three. If I have 127, seven is my leaf, and then 12 is my stem. Mm -hmm. All right, can we scroll up some? All right, here's the data set. So notice this data set, I went ahead and listed from least the greatest as you saw in the last data set that does not have to be the case. Um, did that here. And whenever you're looking at your stem leaf plot, the first thing you do want to do is establish what is your smallest value, what is your largest value. And so in this case, it's 41 and 112. Mm -hmm. 
So notice the dish that goes from the 40s to the 110s. And I'm gonna erase this so we can walk through it. So you set up your stem leaf plot this way. We know it goes from the 40s to 110s. And then from every, for every data value we see, we should have a leaf. So we have the number 41. So you should put a one beside the four. There's no other 40s, so we go to the 50s. We have 50 and 56, so that's zero and six. All right, so now notice there are no values that are in the 60s, so what we do not do is put a zero because that would represent the number 60. That would just be blank. And then we go to the 70s. Notice we have 71, 72, 72, 75, so 71, 72, 72, 75. So for every value you see, there should be a leaf. So even if it's repeated, we have 80, 80, 82, 83, 84, 88, 88, and then 89. Then we have 91, 92, 93. Then we have 100, 101, 101, and then 112. What? Make sure we are okay. Any question? I have a lot of questions. About this one? About this one? Yeah. Okay. So are you okay with how we set the stems up? You got that from like the beginning of the season. Right. Okay. So remember I said right here, it goes from the 40s to the 110s. Yeah. So that's where it goes. So you're just doing it by 10s, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay. And so then from there, every number you see has to have something over here representing it. Okay. So we got 40 as a stem. And then how many numbers are in the 40s? Well, there's only one, and that's the number 41. Yeah. So that's why we got that one represents 41. Okay. And then for the 50s, we got two numbers. We got 50. And 56. So that's why you got a zero to represent 50 and then 56 or six. Okay. And then all of them, you do that same thing. Okay. And so even if there's a repeated number, like we had 71, then we had 72 twice. And so you see that we got two twice in there. And then 75. Questions? Make sure we're good. Anybody? Anybody? So those are the only two things in the homework that I saw that was different than just reading the graph. So try those out. See if you have any questions. You know, um, from this point forward, well, I won't go there. Let's do 12 2 first, and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do moving forward. All right, everybody good? All right, so let's look at 12 2. 12 2 is not that bad either. Measures of central tendency. The first one is the mean, which is another word for average. So if you were finding the average, you would add all your data values together, then divide by the number of data values. So it's the same thing, same process. All right. So there's a light example of that. We have the data set of one, two, three, four, five. Add them up together and divide by five because we have five numbers. So that's 15 divided by three. Uh, 15 divided by five, excuse me, is three.
So look at the next one, the median. Think about middle or middle value. So first step in finding the median, you want to list your data values from least to greatest. So don't forget that step. A lot of times people forget that step before they uh, move forward. That's always your most, really kind of the most important step to be able to establish what, establish what your middle value is. You have to list your data values from least to greatest. Then if the number of data values is odd, you take the middle value. If the number of data values is even, you take the mean of the two middle values. So we have two data sets here. So we can, because we have two different scenarios, you know, if the data set is odd versus if the data set is even. So if the number of data set is odd, then that means we have a legit middle number. Um, so we, we can pick out the middle number. So the first data set, we have numbers one, two, three, four, five, five numbers. That means we have a middle number, which is three. And that's all you do. The middle number, the median is three. Now, if our data set is even, we have an even number of values in our data set. So in the second set, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it means we do not have a legit middle number. So we need to take the two middle numbers, add them together, divide by two, and that will be our median. In this case, it's 3.5. Any problems with the median? Question, any question, everybody good? All right. And then, uh, nope, not the last one. We got uh, one more after this. So your mode, if you think about most, is the data value that appears the most frequently. It is possible to not have a mode. It is possible to have more than one mode. Is everybody done with that purple example? Bimodal means you have two modes. Multimodal means you have more than two. So we have the data set of one seven eight two three five seven six nine one four seven four five six seven eight nine. Our mode would be seven because it appears the most frequently. Any
All right. Questions on that before we look at this last one. All right, so last one's your mid-range. All you do is take your lowest data value, add it to your highest data value, divide by two, and that will be your mid-range. So here we have one through five once again. I want to find the mid-range. The range of my middle, 50% of data. Take one, add it to five, divide by two, and that'll give us three. All right, about a good to go, everybody straight, straight, straight. All right, so that's it as far as uh, new material is concerned. Um, not gonna do two up, 12, three and 12, four, just because um, they call for a little more work. And I know we got a lot of people that are behind. So I'm trying to give you guys a little room to get this thing caught up. Um, and two sections not gonna kill us, you know what I mean? So. So well, what that means, though, is moving forward, since we were able to finish up early as far as new material is concerned, um, every day, you know, I'm going to come in here and the floor just be open for questions. I mean, if you have questions, uh, this will be the time to get them knocked out. The next major thing that we have going on is our final exam. And, you know, uh, let me just see you before. I'm going to give you more details as we get closer to it, but it will be through Zoom. Um, and final exam week, if you've never taken an exam at NSU, what we have is final exam week and we have block scheduling for that final exam week. And um, I'll send you a copy of the block schedule. And so what I normally do is give you guys options. So your schedule, your class period is set up so that it doesn't conflict with anybody else's class or any of your other classes. Um, so I will give you options. Let's say you don't want to take them on the day that your class has set up. I'm going to give you options, but if you can't make none of my options, I'm not going to make more and multiple, multiple options. Like there's a class period set up for y'all. And the only reason I'm saying that is not because I know that y'all have this sense of entitlement, but I've had this in the past when I give you four or five options and they say, like, well, can you do it on such and such date? Well, hold on now. You got a class period that is set up for you. And so I shouldn't have to make set up my whole day to be taking exams. But I will give you options so that if you don't want to wait until your class period uh, and you just want to get it knocked out, you will have it. I think I even have an evening option for anybody who want to do it five or six o'clock at night or something. You know what I mean? So there will be multiple options, about four or five options that you can't take advantage of. Um, and what happened is you log on to Zoom. You have to enable your camera, show your ID to the camera, uh, you know, picture ID, and then I'll give you the password. And then you have a two-hour block to knock it out. Uh, let's see what else. What else? Also. Since we will not be doing new material, and from this point forward, class um, is not really going to be a mandatory thing for real because I'm not doing new stuff. I'm going to uh, have these assignments for you guys to do. They are part of your grade in which it's just something simple, but it's something that I can say we did in which I didn't have to go make up new stuff or find projects where y'all do or anything like that. Basically, I'll just give you a 15-minute video or something like that, and you just give me 10 facts from the video. That's it. You know, and So that would be, like I said, easy grade. Um, but it'd be something that I can say that we did. Like, yeah, we looked at these videos, blah, 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 blah whatever. Um, but you'll get information on that. And that will really start next week. And, you know, it'll just be something given to you weekly. How many more weeks we have left? So we have next week. I won't do it for Thanksgiving. 
So maybe two or three videos that you'll get that just supplement the fact that we're not doing anything new. And uh, and we'll go from there. So with that being said, questions before we close out today. Questions, any questions? Like questions about this? Or... Yes, period. Yeah, you can pull that back. Okay, all right, not a problem. So anything else, anybody else before we close out? I got a question. So if we're not coming, if we not coming to class no more and you like do them videos, we supposed to email you the uh 10 facts for the video? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. And and that'll be in the directions when I send it out and everything. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's exactly how it will happen. Yeah. All right. Anything else, anybody else? And so what I'm gonna do also is I uh, I'll probably put make a great um section for that in math lab so when you turn it in you'll see the grade reflected in math lab for those videos and stuff like that so yep 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 uh, anybody else everybody good all right so uh you guys have a great weekend be safe and i will see you next well i'll see you when i see you right if nothing else i'll see you on final exam day but uh you guys have a good one